Cravings, tracking progress, and building a healthy relationship with food. Amanda, today we're going to help people talk about taking care of their cravings, but we're also going to help them develop a healthy relationship with their food. And I also want to help them in different ways to track success mm -hmm. outside of the scale. Mm -hmm. So starting with number one, how can you take care of cravings? For me, it's flavored fluids. And I think mm -hmm. you said it yourself, you have a tea, a water, and a protein shake. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I love flavored things like EAAs. Mm -hmm. So EAAs are like protein powder without the calories. They taste fantastic. It tastes like juice to me. And just knowing that those amino acids are in my body and building my muscles, like, I mean, that's a double bonus. Number two is going to be a protein shake, like protein shakes, the Limitless, the Frere Rocher. Like I bought a five pound bag. This, I'm on my third Second or third yeah, that one sells five pound bag. I absolutely love this protein drink and it's something that I actually have two or three times a day and I don't mm -hmm. see it as like me guzzling back a gross protein drink. I actually enjoy it. And then the third thing that really helped me with my cravings and when I started my fitness journey was chewing gum. And oh. you you can attest to the little chewing gum that end up on <laughs> yes. everywhere. So when I first started in my fitness journey, I actually I would chew gum instead of eating food. Now I'd go through packs of this and there's still calories in there and you know what I mean? But it, at least it offset me wanting to go and eat. So chewing gum is is my third thing that helped me cure my cravings. What about you? I think I'm a little different. I think because uh, I started, I think, watching my nutrition more when I started belly burns. So I would still treat myself to those things I wanted. I wouldn't deprive myself of everything because the moment I thought I couldn't have it, I wanted it more. But I just wouldn't have it every day. So if I wanted chips, I'd have a handful. If I wanted a cinnamon bun, i cut it in half. Mm. So I would still get to have those things. But I noticed over time that I didn't want those things anymore or they started tasting way too sugary, way too salty. So over months and months and months of just slowly changing my eating habits, those things weren't even desirable anymore. So I think if you're really craving something, go ahead and have it, but don't eat that whole cake. Have a little slice, you know, and then as you're going through your journey, you're going to notice that that stuff doesn't even really taste that great anymore. I agree. All right, now let's help our viewers build a healthy relationship with food. Now when it comes to a healthy relationship with food, and I speak for myself, I eat based on my goal, okay? Right. So if it's summertime and I'm going into a shredding mode, so like right now it's June, and June is usually the peak month for being focused, dialed in, cutting my calories, hitting my protein, doing extra workouts, et cetera, et cetera, because in July, I wanna kick back, I wanna go to barbecues, I wanna walk to Dairy mm -hmm. Queen and have an ice cream, I wanna have a bubble tea whenever I want, but until July, I limit my treats. I don't completely eliminate them, mm -hmm. but every day I tell you, I can go out for a bubble tea or a milkshake, mm -hmm. and I would, and I have, but the month of July, I'm in shredding mode. So I'm gonna focus on keeping my calories at bay, hitting my protein, eating the clean food. Then when it comes to my off season, which is July, August, that's when I'm going to enjoy mm -hmm. and live life but obviously I don't want to put myself too far because I've done that in the mm -hmm. past where I've gone on a vacation for like 16 days. And I'm like, you know what? For two weeks, I'm just going to eat whatever I want. And then it's like a McFlurry for breakfast, McFlurry yeah. for lunch, McFlurry for dinner. And then I gain like 10 pounds of fat and it takes me like six to 12 weeks yeah. just to lose it. Yeah. When normally it only takes me two weeks. So now I'm a little bit smarter, we right. would hope. And that I am now eating within moderation, enjoying myself, but eating in moderation and not going too far off where I left off the month of June. So when July hits this year, mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure that yes, I'm going to enjoy, but I'm not going to indulge. Yeah, I agree with you. So what I do is when I'm on my belly burns, I stick to my nutrition as best as I can because that's my focus and my goal. When I'm not on a belly burn, I still kind of track my food, but it's more loosely, kind of like mm. you just said. So if I want to have, you know, that Dairy Queen, I now get the snack size. <laughs> so I get to treat myself, but it's actually filling and I don't track it, you know, because I don't need to because I worked hard for 30 days. So I'm not going out and eating that big ice cream, but I'm still treating myself and I don't have to worry about, you know, tracking it. And it's enough for that little, you know, treat to hold you over until you feel like something else again. So do you still track it or you don't track it at all? You just go moderation, uh, but no tracking. I kind of moderation because at this point I eat so my food is so regular and I've oh, tracked okay. it for so long and I've that I kind of know, mm. you know, where yeah. my calories are at. So yeah. I know when I've hit, you know, so many calories that that ice cream is going to put me over. Well, it's funny that you bring that up because that's what I'd recommend to most people is number one is try and eat as similar as possible as you do. Mm -hmm. And then when you add that treat on, you know how far over you've oh, gone yeah. because you've been doing a belly burn and you know where calories are mm -hmm. at now. 
But honestly, the second best way that you can do it is if you actually just eyeball it plug in your food as normal, and then just plug in a snack size Dairy Queen Blizzard. Mm -hmm. The first best level is honestly if you just track it. Yeah. Because even if you track it, you're gonna see like 3,000, 4,000. Friday, I had 6,500 oh, yeah. calories. Like it just, pizza. you have a pizza, mm -hmm. gone, right? Somebody brings in a little bowl of oh. candies, pop 10 of those, yep. there's your calories for the it's day. It's a celebration, somebody yep. brings a Cinnabon, you eat the whole oh, one yeah. instead of a quarter, yep. gone. You don't realize how much <laughs> it is, you know, totally. All right, so the last one here is we're gonna help you develop non-scale wins. So yes, jumping on the scale and losing 10 pounds is important because of the fact that it, ref it does reflect on how hard you've worked, but it isn't your only measuring tool mm -hmm. to dictate whether or not you've been successful. Now, in one of our previous segments, Amanda mentioned that she just started running. Now to me, that's a huge non-scale win because again, three years ago, Amanda probably wasn't even really walking anywhere. No. Nope. Like if you were, remember you tracking your steps, it was hard mm -hmm. enough for you to get yeah, like 3,000, 4,000. Yeah, it was like three, 4,000 was right? my goal. And now you're doing 20,000 and a good chunk of them are coming from increased activity mm -hmm. from like heavy duty running. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's a huge non-scale win. So for when it comes to you, you can do it tracking through activity. In this recent challenge, I challenged all my belly burns to start timing themselves and see how many calories they can burn in two minutes on the bike. I also challenge them to do two minutes on the ski machine to see how far they can go. Now, if they do them again in two or three months from now, mm -hmm. guess what? They're gonna be able to see progress not only on the scale, but they're gonna say, wow, I was at 400 meters on the ski machine in two minutes, now I'm at five. Mm -hmm. That's a huge jump. Another non-scale win is how are your clothes fitting? Like you're probably like, your closet is completely different from 12 months oh, ago, yeah. right? Yeah. And to me, that's a huge non-scale yeah. win, yeah. right? So you don't have to necessarily be jumping on the scale and that determines whether or not you've been working hard or eating clean. You have other methods. In fact, if you are in a weight loss challenge or you are attempting to lose weight, I would tell you to find two or three other non-scale measuring tools that you can use and have them moving forward. Mm -hmm. What about you? Okay. Well. I actually like that you brought this up because this has come up a lot with me recently as people keep coming up to me and asking me, what's your goal? Mm. What is your goal? What is your goal? And every time I say, I don't really like to talk about a goal because honestly, wholeheartedly, my goal is to be better than I was the day before. Because if I sit here and I tell myself my goal is to be a certain weight or a certain size, I feel like I'm setting myself up for failure. My goal is to come here and to do my best, to feel good and just to keep like that success going. So with the running, still doing it a year later and now being you know, faster than some of the people going, oh my gosh, you've gone so much faster, or being able to get that smaller size, or feeling more comfortable in my skin. That's my goal. So my goal isn't a number. My goal is to just keep feeling better, getting better. And yeah, so I, I think that sometimes people put too much weight on a specific goal and the scale, and they need to really focus more on how they feel. And like you said, the clothing, their strength ability, the things they couldn't do before, those are all wins. Even going from zero workouts to one workout, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people got to look at that as a win. Oftentimes, Matt and I, we're the ones that are talking to everybody when they're first joining. And honestly, the fact that somebody committed and signed up is one step closer yeah. to becoming yeah. something completely different. And I think that even just you start from that is that deciding, you know what, I'm going to sign up for Fit Club. And then you actually show up and you do your yeah. first workout. I, then you do your first five days. Mm -hmm. Then you do your first month. Then you do yeah. your first belly burn. Then you do your first year. Like these are all huge milestones. I've, and yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I tell, sorry, I tell people all the time on their first day because I get excited. I always say you're already winning. Like yeah. You showing up on your first day, you want like just coming. I got to win for you. So in the challenge right now, I have the, the challengers running in the back hallway or in the mall mm -hmm. here. And I saw Amanda at least in the middle to the front of the pack when it came to sprints. Okay. So that's a huge non-scale win. So if you guys awesome. want to see that video, make sure you follow Amanda on Instagram or friend her on Facebook. She'll be posting that video soon. So Amanda, thank you for being a part of this three-part segment. You've been truly amazing. Loving your podcast. Keep up with that journey. Awesome. Continue to inspire others. I think that you're becoming one of the most franchise known people here at Fit Club. <laughs> Everybody that comes up to me, they're always saying, that one girl with the pink hair. They don't know your name. They don't know your name, but random guys like the shoe guy, the, the girl with the pink hair, she's doing awesome, hey? And I'm like, she is doing awesome. But honestly, Amanda, I expect nothing less from you. Well, I thank you because we're a team. So we've done this together. <laughs>